Hey everyone, it is mid-March. It's warming up, the sun's out, the birds chirping. It's time to think about camping. Yeah, I know it. Just ignore all that white stuff back there. Let's go get the tent out. Wow, I've had this thing a long time. So back in about 2008, I bought this tent brand new. Used it for about a year or two, and it's been sitting in storage ever since. <laughs> Woo! I took it out last fall <laughs> to uh, use it, and I realized my tent poles here were all broken. So they all have the shot cord inside of them, and all the shot cord was all deteriorated and all but I think one of the tent poles was uh, working right. So we're gonna replace that now. So over time, all these uh, shot cords are just a bungee cord and they do deteriorate over time. So, you know, every so many years you might have to replace them. Luckily they make a repair kit. I have this one here. Uh, this one is from Texport. I believe I got this off Cabela's because it had 45 inches of, or 45 feet of bungee cord with it. Um, you can buy the same similar uh, repair kit off Amazon, a uh, different manufacturer, but it only had like 12 feet of cord. So that's why I went with this one. I so I think I got off Cabela's, but I can't find it there anymore. But um, I'll put similar one uh, from Amazon down below if you want to check out the prices on that. It's only like five bucks, so really cheap repair. So when I took this out of the bag, there was a complete mess. All these poles fell apart and were mixed up. So first thing I did is I laid them all out, got them in the correct order, found out which ones went with each one and uh, grouped them together. So I got one, two, three, four. So there's five tent poles. So we'll just start with this one. We'll unwrap this. Now really the important thing to note on these is that there is one that is going to be your end. And you can see here, it's got a silver end on that end and on this end. All the rest of them have a uh, silver end on one end and just the regular pole on the other end. All right, let's open up the little kit here and see what's inside of it. Now each kit's basically gonna have the same thing. You're gonna get your shot cord. You're gonna get a piece of wire. You're gonna use this kind of like a needle to thread through your sections of poles. You're gonna have some washers which is going to be used to stop the shock cord from going through the, the ends of the poles. That's about it. And some instructions. It's a pretty simple process. They just say make the shock cord about six inches longer than your actual pole length. And uh, we'll do that at the end here. So I'm going to start with my first pole, the one with the two silver ends on it. And now we're going to get out our wire here to thread it. Stuff is really curly. Now it's probably hard to see, but inside there's just a little tiny hole, just a little bit bigger than your shock cord. So what you wanna do is tie this wire onto here, but you don't want a big knot in or anything. So I think I'm just gonna do it like this, where you slip the end of the wire under the sleeve of the shock cord there. There, just kinda of shoved it into the end like that. And then I'll just put a piece of tape around it to hold it there. That way it'll slide through the poles nicely. All right, we'll see if that holds. Makes a nice small knot there, so it shouldn't get stuck. All right, we'll just feed the wire up through this pole. Like I said there's kind of a little, in these silver ends, there's kind of just a little hole in the middle of them there that you gotta go through. Helps if your wire is nice and straight. There it is. Sure to be kind of, oh look at that. See, it comes right out this end. Now, to pull this through. All right, here it comes. I'm trying to be gentle so I don't pull the wire out. All right, there's one down. And now, to show you quick, we got uh, all these other poles right here. One of them has a little bit longer silver end than the other, so it'd be this one right here. So this one's gonna be our end pole. So we're gonna separate that one out, put that one on last. And now you just uh, take your pick, which one you want, and keep threading it through. All right, we got it through the final end pole here. So now what we're gonna do is tie this off with a little washer. 
Need a better look of it there. So there's the end. So I'm just gonna cut my wire off here a little easier. Save that for the next pull. All right, what we got here is these tiny little washers. See, we're right, <laughs> barely even see it. There you go, right there. So now we just gotta thread that through this bungee cord and just basically tie a knot in the end of this bungee cord. There you go. What you end up is something like that. So now when it pulls back through this cord, that little washer will uh, stop it in there so it won't come out. All right, now I'm just gonna put this together so I can see how long I need to make it. So what'll help if you get a pair of these uh, vice grips, needle nose ones work good. It says pull it out six inches farther than it needs to be. So kind of pull it till it hits the end. Go about another six inches. So, yeah, do a little bit more there, right there. And just clamp it on so it won't go back in. Now what you can do is you can cut your bungee cord. and put your other washer on it. And just like the other side, you just tie a little knot so the washer doesn't fall off. There we go, cut off that little excess. Undo that, snaps back in. Now your tent pole should work and you can just fold it back up like you had before. One done, four more to go. So you see, it's a very simple repair. It only costs about five bucks and pretty much anyone can do this. Now, like I said earlier, it's mid-March, so ice fishing's kind of coming to an end. Can't quite get the boat out yet. So uh, we've got a few repairs to do before spring here. I got some boat work to do, a couple motors there, finish up my tent. Got some work on my camper to do. So I'll be working on all that stuff. I don't know about you, but I'm getting pretty excited for spring, getting out all my camping gear and getting everything ready. I already got a couple of uh, fishing trips planned. So in June, we're gonna be heading back to Rhinelander, hit some of those lakes in the open water season. Uh, if you saw last winter here, we hit a few in the ice fishing season and uh, lots of lakes over there, just beautiful area. We're gonna go back, hit a bunch of those. So those will probably be some of the first lakes you see pop up here. Other than that, we'll probably head back up to northern Minnesota for Lake Vermilion, get some spring walleyes there. And uh, like I said, we're trying to fish every lake in Wisconsin and Minnesota. So every time we go out, we'll be fishing a new lake and we document the whole thing, show you what it looks like, what the fishing's like, the boat landings, give you some underwater views, some aerial views. And I upload all that to GoMidwestFishing.com. You can check out the lake review link and you can see all the lakes we fish in case you wanna go check out some of the lakes yourself. You can watch us go fish it first and see if it's worthwhile. All right, everyone, I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.